Hello and God bless you. Well, today we'll be continuing our sermon series, What is the Bible About? This is part five of the New Testament. Last time, and I know it's been a while, you know, this, like I said, when I first kind of thought about this series, you know, I, when it first came to me, you know, I kind of had an idea of how I wanted to do, and this kind of came more involved because there's so much good stuff, you know, I don't want to leave anything out that's too important, you know, um, Kind of had more of, I guess, a, a simplized version in my mind when I first came up with it. But once I started kind of looking up what I wanted to talk about, I started realizing that, you know, there's so much that, uh, that's so much good stuff in the Bible. I mean, there's, you know, there really is. And, you know, I just want to do it justice. And, you know, last time we talked about. Jesus after his resurrection, what he did for those 40 days, and I knew where I wanted to go from there, but kind of didn't know how I wanted to bring it out, but we're going to kind of break this up into two parts this week, and then God willing next week, because today we're going to be talking about the rise of Jesus' followers. After Jesus went to heaven. And today we're going to be focusing on Peter and John. And we're going to start off with Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And we're going to read 1 through 47. We're going to have a lot of scriptures, like I always say, a lot of scriptures today. But here we go in verse 1 it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cl cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the spirits gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, ab ab aboard, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And this is basically saying right there that ain't these just a bunch of ignorant people? Southern people, they call them hicks and stuff, so it's like these bunch of old hicks here talking? Basically, what they're saying here is, you know, they're calling these a bunch of ignorant people that don't know because, you know, they're just farmers. I mean, not farmers, fishermen for a lot of them. You know, and they're like, these ignorant far fish fish fishermen are talking in our languages. And how heard we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Parturians, Medians, and Medians, and Elamites, in the dwelling in the Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, sorry I'm pronouncing these words wrong, and in Pontus, and in Asia, Phrygia, sorry again, Pelomophilia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, 
round about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome, Jews and Protestants. No, prolos, pro, prolites. Sorry. I do unfortunately mess up with some of these words. Sorry about that. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and, all, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For those are not, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and noble day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by the miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determination, determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the partridge which part, um, David, that is, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he shall raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heaven, into the heavens, but he saith himself, 
The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his words were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and in the breaking, in breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. And that's when Peter, who, you know, always kind of was ready to ask Jesus a question whenever he would say something, he was the first one to stand up and testify Jesus for who he truly was. And then we're going to read some of the next two chapters. We're going to read Acts chapter 3 first. We're going to read the entire chapter, I believe it is, 1 through 26. This is where Peter and John start coming together, and they rise up. So here in verse 1 it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received their strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which, he, which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them, 
in the porch that is called Solomon's great wonder, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, though through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should be should suffer and hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heavens must receive until the times of the restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his prophet, holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Ye and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. And now we're continuing with Peter and John in chapter 4 of Acts. We're going to read 1 through 33. And it says here in verse 1, And as I spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came up, came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and the elders and scribes and Ananias the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst they asked by what power or by what name have ye done this? 
Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day be ex examined of the good deed done by the impotent man, to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doeth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And behold, the men which was held standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the country, council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a noble miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that are dwelling in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people, for all the men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was about forty years old, and on whom this miracle of healing was showed. And being let go, they went to their own com company, and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, the, that they lifted up their voice to God, with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God, which hath made heaven and earth and the sea, and all that is in, in them, all them in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, Why did the heathen rage, and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together, against the Lord and against his Christ. For the truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to, to be done. And now, Lord, behold, their threatening and great grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may, they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that the signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. 
and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither shall, said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. <coughs> and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And now we're going to go on to our last chapter for today. Because I know this is probably going to be long. Dang it, I may have zoomed through it quick. Now, John's not mentioned by name in here, but he may be a part of this. But we're going to pick this up in Acts chapter 5. We're going to read 14 through 42. And it says here in 14, And believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick unto the streets, and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter's passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them into the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison is truly prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors, but when we had opened we found no men therein. Now when the captain no, now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them were unto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captains with, with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they sat them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and entreated to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our Father raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his high right hand to be prince in the Savior, and for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up in the council a Pharisee named Gamal, a doctor of the law, 
had a reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these, these men. For before these days rose up, that is, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves who was slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for, this, for if this counsel or of this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. I love that. That's so... I love that part there in 41 where they... They got, you know, they got beat in 40 for, you know, preaching Jesus. And when in 41, they were like happy. They are like, Jesus did that for me. And now I got beat for, because Jesus called me. That's so, so amazing. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to talk about Paul next week. God willing. So we'll see y'all next time. I hope you liked the video. As I always say at the end, don't take my word for it or anyone else's, whether it be preacher at church, preacher on TV, a Christian friend, someone who may not word, know the word. You know, just take it, you know, don't take anyone's word for it. Read the Bible for yourself so you will know exactly what the Word of God says and you will know what God means. You know, through prayer for understanding and reading the Word, you will know the Word for yourself and you won't, you know, if someone's deliberately trying to steer someone in the wrong direction, you won't be one of those because you will know the Word for yourself. And 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's for profitable doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And here in the next verse 317, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. And 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, I like this verse right here because this is showing us exactly what we're what I'm saying here about studying the word for yourself. Because here in Acts 17, the preachers go to Thessalonica. They try to share the connection with Jesus in the Old Testament, and they don't want to hear it. So they go to Thessalonica. I mean, excuse me. They go to Berea after Thessalonica. And they want to hear it. And here's what it says right here in 11. That these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So see what I like about this is. You know they didn't just sit there on the pews. 
and listen to what the preacher had to say and say yeah, yeah I like that that sounds cool I believe that they said you know I like what that guy said but I'm gonna see if what he said lines up with the word and that's what we got to do you know we got to know the word for ourselves. you know read read the Bible you know like I said through prayer and you know prayer for understanding and reading it for yourself you're gonna know what the Bible says God's gonna open up stuff to you because you know you may have somebody that you know may like I said either deliberately try to steer someone the wrong way or maybe they just you know the Bible spoke to them with something they were personally going through and it gave them word of encouragement to go through whatever they might be going through at that time but it might not be exactly what the words trying to say so if you read the Bible yourself you know exactly what the Bible says and if someone is trying to steer you the wrong way you will know that they're not right or you're going to or you're going to you know you're just going to have more proof that of just who God is you know if you know if there's you know if they're giving you the right word and you've been reading it for yourself you know exactly what it says and if you want to read the Bible for yourself if you got you know any any way you may be able to access websites either on your phone or computer whatever it may be maybe at work here's top four websites that you can go to and you can read the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation and almost any translation you want first one is Bible.com second is BibleGateway.com third is BibleHub.com and the fourth is Bible Studies Tools and any of these websites I mean you can go on there you can click on whatever version of the Bible you want to read if it would be King James New King James NIV English Standard Version whatever whatever version you may want to that you may want to get a little bit better understanding of it you can go on any of these websites right here and if you have any smart devices you know any iPads or tablets or iPhones or you know regular Android phones smart TVs you know computers laptops desktop whatever it may be you can go on to like if you got a computer you can go on to like download.com or something you can look up some Bible software you can download that way or you can go like on to smart devices and go like to Apple store or the Google Play store or you can go to the Amazon store and you can go to Windows there's also if you got like a Roco device there is channels I believe the ones I've seen I think you have to pay for but like a lot of these other ones I know on Google Play and Amazon and I'm sure also Apple as well I don't have any Apple products to know for sure but like Bible.com and Bible Gateway all have their own apps and those are free so you can go and download them I mean you can get a, a you know some paid ones if you want to you can like Olive Tree or Logos you can you know get you a vast library of different Bibles and different Bible related biblical related uh, books but you know you just want a, a Bible you can read you know in your spare time on your phone or wherever it may be you can get down all these apps get the free one if you like I kind of highly recommend it you know I mean if you ain't got a Bible or maybe maybe you're somewhere like say on top of a skyscraper or something and you can't have your Bible with you you can have your Bible on the phone and you know, if you got a non-believer co-worker that questions you why you believe what you do you can have verses you like bookmarked and you can be on top of skyscrapers and this is why I believe what I believe so you know this is just kind of some little other ways to share the word with the world you know we can get actual books or we can go to websites we can download apps you know whatever it may be 
Word of God can spread anywhere in the world. We just got to let them know. And this right here is a, another good alternative to reading the Bible, if you will like. It's a audio Bible. It's voiced by actors playing the different parts. It's uh, It really makes the Bible come to life. Like if you're reading about the crucifixion, you're hearing the hammer hitting the nails and everything. You know, So it definitely helps bring the word to life if you're... One of those people that when you're reading something you just see white pages and black writing and nothing's kind of life. This will kind of make the Bible come to life for you. And if you read it more often, you will you know, the, the Word of God is the living Word and it will start to come to life. But this will definitely help out with that. You can get the actual CD and stuff from their website if you like. I think it's around 50 bucks or so. I could be wrong about that. But right here at the bottom of the screen, you see the YouTube playlist. This is for my channel. And unfortunately, I guess because of copyright issues or something, the videos do get deleted a lot. But I try to keep the playlist updated with every book. So you can just click on one of the video links. There should be a link at the bottom to in the description for this playlist. You can also click on my channel name. And go on to the playlist and find the word of promise and you can just read the entire bible that way maybe this will be your first time reading and you know this will definitely help maybe give you a little bit of understanding on some of the some stuff that maybe you don't understand exactly what it's talking about so i highly recommend this as you can see here by the picture in the beginning, it was God and man, and God and man together. Sin separated us, and Jesus bridges the gap. Now, if you don't know the Lord, and you would like to know Him, this is probably the easiest way to explain how to be saved. The ABCs of salvation. A is for accept or acknowledge. B is to believe. C is to confess. You're going to accept and acknowledge that you're a sinner and that you're in need of a Savior. You're going to believe that Jesus is who He said He was, the Son of God, and He paid it the price for you on the cross. You're going to confess your sins to God and you're going to Ask his forgiveness and for him to come into your heart. You see the scriptures there. A Romans three twenty three says, "For all sin and come short of the glory of God." And B for believe. We have Romans five eight. But have God come into His love towards us, that in which we were while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And John three sixteen verse. A lot of people know even if they don't hate me in church. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Confess. Is, we see Romans 10.9 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of a man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10.13 For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ephesians 2.8-9 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's what it's all about right there. We all sin. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And even though we sin, God still sent Jesus to die for us. And 
when we confess who Jesus is, we will be saved. And if you don't know how to make that prayer, if you say, Lord, I want to be saved, I want to be with you, that's right here, it's a sinner's prayer. And if you say this, you know, and believe it, believe those ABCs, God will save you. I can't save you. Your preacher on TV, your preacher at the church, nobody can save you. It's all God. And it's all by God nudging you with the Spirit. And it's by God accepting your forgiveness and accepting you. Sinner's Prayer says, Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your Son and that he died on the cross at Calvary that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you in all the days of my life. Because your word is truth. And I confess with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's all you got to do. It's simple. That's why it's ABCs. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Just accept, acknowledge, believe it, confess your sins to Him. And that's all it is. And if you are any under uh, any chains of addiction, depression, sickness, disease, whatever it may be, it says here that Jesus promised us authority and power. You know, there's that song, there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. I think it's to shatter every chain, because a broken chain can be fixed. But a shattered chain, you can't fix it. You see right here, Matthew 28, 18, Acts 1, 8, John 14, 12. There's some verses there about, you know, the power, but, you know, you already, if you confessed, or, you know, if you already confessed, and now you're just burdened with something, whatever it may be, you know, just give it to Jesus. He can shatter those chains, like I said, Sickness, disease, depression, you know, addiction, whatever it may be. Jesus could just take it away. Hope you enjoyed the video. I love you and Jesus loves you. God bless you. I cannot wait to see what the Lord has for us next week. And if you like the video, continue watching. We'll keep on going until the Lord calls us home.